Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to Floating in Dreams, thank you for clicking on one of my videos today. Today we are going to be ranking all of my rosy and mauve toned eyeshadow palettes. This is a video I promised you would be coming in December, I didn't get around to that, but now we are doing it today. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome back if you're a returning visitor, thank you very much for joining me today and watch another one of my videos. I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do, to do so. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I make YouTube videos about eyeshadow palettes, S's and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my products, things shop my stashes, product overviews, I review stuff up on my blog, so if you're ever looking for like close-up swatches, that's usually the place to go, unless I link a video in the description box that features other content that I've already created, that can give you other information. So always check out the description box down below. And maybe you can tell, I've got a very, very fair complexion that leans cool to neutral. More neutral than cool tone, perhaps. Uh, but that very much skews my makeup preferences and they tend to be very unpopular opinions. So if you'd like to join the Snow Angel Club, then I think especially today's video, you're going to find some recommendations that maybe you've already heard of Maybe you haven't, but I've got 37 eyeshadow palettes to rank for you today. I've got two announcements to make though before we can get to the, to the, uh, to the actual ranking. I'm wearing a beret because my hair was looking atrocious and the bangs just wouldn't lie the way I wanted to. So I was like, I'll wear a hat because this is how I've been going out now that I've got shorter hair. Um, so I hope you like the beret. I like it. It's not the same shade of red my, as my sweater. I know. I know. But we're, I'm, I'm just trying to make the best out of a bad situation. Speaking of which, I'm getting over a cold, so if I sound very nasally or raspy or anything else, just bear with me as we're doing this. But I'm excited for this video, so let's rank 37 eyeshadow palettes. Here we go. So the way I'm going to be organizing today's video is going to be honorable mentions, and then we're going to get into the ranking itself. The honorable mentions, I haven't really tried that much, so I don't feel comfortable ranking them. And then we have 32 left that we're going to rank. I will be putting chapters in this video so you can watch it very easily in bits. And if you just want to watch, for instance, the top 10 or the top 5, you will be able to do so. So I hope that's going to be helpful. And with the honorable mentions, that's where we're going to start. So I've got five of them here, and these all showed up in videos towards the end of 2021. So these are like at the bottom of the pile of things I still need to try, really. So in case you watch some of my full face off videos towards the end of the year, um, you will have seen me do a full face of H&M Beauty. And while I did try this quad in nice mauves in in that video, I just wanna give it another shot before I really make my mind up about it. So it looks really nicely cool toned, mauve toned. And by the way, people, I'm aware that you can also pronounce it as mauve, but in my brain, that word just doesn't work in English because it sounds too much like Dutch. Does that make sense? Mauve is a perfectly fine pronunciation of that word in American English. So that's why I'm sticking to it. So we've got this one, which is lovely. I tried it, it was okay, but I wanna try it again just to see how it wears throughout the day because I haven't really paid attention to that. And then we have, what's this called again? Vintage Rose, which is one of their larger palettes, which I have not even put on my eyes yet. The quality of these seems nice. They're quite affordable and yes, H&M makeup, H&M has a makeup line that if you can't find it in store, check their website or the app because they tend to sell a lot of their products more so online than they do in store. And another full face of video I did was with Kiko. This is from their Precious Rituals collection and this is in Spiritual Pink, which is another one that I've already used, but in that full face of video. And I always find that if I just use it in the video, I'm so much more focused on filming the video than actually making my mind up about the quality of the product that I just want to go back to these things and really put them on my eyes again and be able to take pictures of it so that I can do a full review if I feel so inclined. Um, so yeah, these palettes are still on the to try pile. And finally, in honorable mentions, are these two quads from ColourPop. This is the Sorbet and this is the Like a Virgo. So these are recent releases from ColourPop. They came out in the last year, which of course 
in terms of ColourPop, that doesn't seem that recent, but I tend to only pick and choose from ColourPop releases what I want to try. As you will see, they're not always my favorite, but I'm very excited about this. Um, because I tried one of the other quads in this line called Cream Soda, and I really, really enjoyed it. So that's why I wanted to give Sorbet a try. And then they came out with this Zodiac collection over the summer, and Like a Virgo is one that appealed to me immediately. And I was hoping that these would have the same really good quality as the other quads uh, that I already tried. And these also come, some of these come with like a duochrome kind of shade. So this seems to have one of those like pretty like bluey purple sort of flippy shades. So I'm very excited to try these. And I've kept the boxes for the Zodiac ones that I have because the packaging is just too cute. So I can't wait to try these and to be able to give you some more thoughts. Those will be coming up in, t in 10 palette review videos once I've tried them. Everything else is either featured in 10 palette review videos or I may already have dedicated reviews up on my blog as well. So there will be loads of links in the description box down below so you can find all of that other content if I've already done that with these. So I made a bit of a ca counting mistake here. It's 31 palettes that we still have left to rank. Um, I kind of miscalculated there towards the end, but it's really not such, such a big deal because in a way I'm going to be ranking these all in the bottom part of this ranking for let's say, obvious reasons and not because it's bad quality I don't think anything I have here are duds or bad quality if it, it was like if it was truly bad quality it would have been decluttered by now um, but I did try some new things precisely for this video and the thing I want to rank at the bottom and this is just totally has to do with preferences that I have for my own makeup tastes and that I love in an eyeshadow palette, which is why the Zoeva Together We Shine eyeshadow palette that I've only tried one so far, I do have to say, but this is gonna go in the number 31 spot because it is warm tone mauves rather than cool toned and it only has three shimmers. I prefer a shimmer over a matte, so I prefer if palettes either have an equal split between shimmers or mattes or skew more shimmer heavy. That's just my preferences. This is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today, in case you're wondering. Can I get away with this? Yes. It doesn't have my preference though. Um, but if you do like warm tones, then I do think I like the quality of this palette a lot. It's got a lot of mattes, which if you love your mattes, you're gonna love that. And it's all quite warm in its undertone. Since that's not my preference, like this would be a mauve rosy tone palette for me in more like the summertime. Right now, especially because I'm wearing the red sweater, I feel my eyes can look a little sickly. Maybe it's also because I'm still getting over this cold that that's also making my eyes a little bit more red. And then I find these like warmish shades more difficult to look right on me and it can make me look a little tired and a little red in the face, you could say. So that's why I don't prefer this kind of undertone on myself. I find that cooler rosy tones just look much more vibrant on me and just I can pull them off a lot more easily. It's just not my favorite. And the same goes for the number 30 and that's the Tartlet Juicy. Um, I love Tarte's Tartlet in Bloom. That's like one of my all-time favorite palettes. And when I saw this online, I thought it was going to have like a similar spiel to the in bloom where you get different undertones in the different rows because for me the in bloom has a cool tone row a neutral row and a warm toned row and i thought that this was also going to be like a little bit more cool tone and then this was going to be a bit more neutral and then we had these warm pinks and i was like oh that looks so pretty so the only row i loved in here no that's not true i like two rows i love the bottom row I surprisingly really like the pink toned row, uh, but this middle row, it just pulled very orange on me and I didn't love it that much. Is this a good quality palette? Yes. I don't love scented makeup, but this I like much better. It's like a vanilla cocoa kind of scent. So it's not overly sweet and it's not overpowering. Like you really need to stick your nose in in order to smell it. It's not like you open the palette and there's this waft of fragrance coming to you, luckily. Um, so this is a lovely palette. Will I reach for this a lot? I don't think so. And the same goes for the Zoeva, which is why these get to go into the bottom part of the ranking. So the next 
numbers, so this is numbers 26 through 29, are my ColourPop palettes, so I decided to kind of group them together here, uh, because I still have the palettes, but what's inside it are no longer the original color stories. I decided, after trying these out, that the color stories just weren't perfect for me, so I, I, I just picked uh, the different shades that I liked, and I put those in two of the palettes, I've reused the packaging of the other ones for other purposes. So, to be quite fair, Colourpop's Menage à Moi, their Making Mauves, their Blush Crush, and also their Flutter By just weren't my favorites. Now, the shades that I kept, I put in the Making Mauves palette. So, this is a conglomeration of all four of those palettes, really. And I think this even came from like the ooh -la, la or something like that, like it came from somewhere completely differently. Uh, these are the three original shimmers that you get in the Making Mauves. I do remember that, but I wanted this one to be more cool toned. It was a bit warm on me. The Menage à Moi had pressed glitter, so that wasn't going to cut it for me, and I actually put in two different shades, two? I think it was. So these aren't even ColourPop shades. This came from a Jaclyn Hill palette and this as well. So. Um, this isn't even all Colourpop, but I remember like keeping one shade from the Blush Crush and like two shades from this palette and like a couple from this one and a couple from the Flutter By. The Flutter By of the four was still my favorite, but this one is completely empty because I thought I could reuse this as a travel palette if I just want to lift out a couple of Colourpop singles from my collection, put it in this palette, I can always repurpose it. And the Blush Crush was my least favorite because it was very, very pink on me. And again, it gave me sort of pink eye and it wasn't perfect. Um, but I put my nine favorite shades from the Stone Cold Fox in here. So that's how I've repurchased, repurposed those. If you would like to see me redo these palettes, then you can uh, go to the video that I've linked in the description box because I did film that process for you. So number 25 is the Pat McGrath Quad. This is her Celestial Divinity Quad Looks Quad in Risque Rose. And this is what that palette looks like. It's pretty, but it ended up being my least favorite of the three quads she came out with uh, for the holiday season in 2020. Like, this was my least favorite. I hadn't expected that. I thought the Fleur Fantasia or the Interstellar Icon, especially the Interstellar Icon, I liked so much more. It became my favorite of the three. Uh, and I thought I was going to prefer this a lot more, um, but this just wasn't that successful for me. I need a mid-tone shade to sort of bridge the gap between these for my fair skin to really bring it together. I think this is a stunning palette, however, if you are someone with a deeper undertone. If you have deep skin, this is stunning. So number 24 is going to be a quad by a brand that I adore. I like so many of their things, but a lot of the things that they do are quite warm toned and I don't always love that. I will be ranking my warm tone palettes as well, so that's when this brand will definitely make more of an appearance, um, but I will be doing that next month for you. And the brand I'm mentioning here is Charlotte Tilbury. This is her quad in the Vintage Vamp. I'm not sure if this is still what it's called, um, but this is my favorite Charlotte Tilbury quad that I own because look at, like th this shade is what I live for. But that also tends to be my favorite shade in here. This is a little bit too plum for it to be rosy mauvey, and then this pop shade is quite golden toned. So while I like this, I really appreciate it. Usually when I use this, I just go for the top two shades and I kind of ignore the bottom two, uh, but it's lovely quality and I really, really do like how this gives you a very subtle look. Um, and I think it's very wearable for a lot of people and especially if you have more mature lids. I think the Charlotte Tilbury formula is one of the most outstanding ones because it doesn't create a lot of fallout and it's just very easy and everyday and blendable and wearable and I like the palette for that, but it does get to go into the number 24 spot because I don't get a lot of use out of it. Number 23 is a palette that I wanted to love so much more and I'm talking about the Lorac Pro 4. So Lorac did these pro palettes for a while. I think they are still all available and they used to be one of my favorites. The Lorac Pro 3 till this day is an outstanding palette for my particular skin tone. And when the brand came out with this more rosy tone version, I was like, this is looking stunning. It's just, maybe it's that the formula just feels a little outdated to me. I'm not entirely sure what it is, 
but this palette just isn't really giving me all the vibes. It just isn't. There's a couple of shades in here, though, that I really like it for. I really like Silver Mauve. I really like Merlot. I like this brownie shade called Java. Um, and then it has a couple of really pretty mid-tone mattes right here in the middle. So there are a couple of shades here that I really, really like it for. I don't see myself decluttering this anytime soon, but it was just a little samey, samey. And for, for the moment it was released, I don't think it was that new and exciting anymore, which is why this didn't get a lot of hype. I just felt it was a little outdated and a little late to the party, you could say. Number 23 then, the Lime Crime Venus 3 palette. So they did, they did these little box palettes for a while and I've got a couple of them. And this is, I think, my least favorite ones of the Lime Crime palettes that I've tried. Um, it's pretty. Um, it's got some like purpley lilacs in here, but I feel that the overall vibe I get from this palette when I use it is like rosy toned leaning. It's really, really pretty for spring. So there's like a sort of like, if Easter isn't too early <laughs> and it's a nice bright spring day, I might want to wear this, but it's not a palette I really think about that I reach for a lot. I really like the formula and I really like how this comes together. It just doesn't deserve a higher ranking because it's just not my go-to. I don't think about this palette like, ooh, that's my favorite rosy mauve tone palette. It's just not. And then number 21 is my Urban Decay Back Talk palette. This was limited edition years ago. And this is one of the reasons why I don't own a couple of other very famous rosy tone palettes. I don't own Huda Beauty's New Nude because I had this. <laughs> um, so this is weird packaging because you can take out the mirror um, and then you have two sides and you get face shades and you get eye shades and the eye shades are very limiting. And that's why I kind of put this in the bottom part of this ranking again, because I feel that in order to really make this work, like the best transition shade for me in this entire palette is this cheek shade. It's a blush. Um, you can use it on your eyes. It's called Double Take. It's really pretty. I do like the shade Back Talk, but it's just a touch too light, I think, for most people. It goes quite brown toned as well. Now, I really appreciated this palette when it came out. I still like it till this day. I really, really do. Um, I would still reach for this for sure, but it was limited edition. You can no longer buy it. And it was a little bit of a faff to use, which is why... This does get to go into like the more bottom half of this ranking. Number 20 then um, is going to be the Natasha Denona Mini Love Palette. I don't own the Big Love because it had a lot of reds and purples that I didn't really appreciate, but this to me is just much more of like a rosy mauve tone kind of palette, which is why I picked it up. You get some like interesting like shimmers in here, which I like, and it has only two mattes and three shimmers. So that tends to go with my preference. I do really like how these two mattes complement each other. This is perfect for me in the crease. A nice shade to deepen something up with, then a good inner corner highlight, and then this shade for all over the lid. This shade is a little bit too like rosy toned and warm toned. It, it again looks quite sickly on me. So that's not a shade I tend to reach for a lot. It is pretty, but then I would always top it with that one for sure, or with this one, just to tone it down a little bit. Next up is number 19, which is the Pet McGrath Divine Rose One palette. I thought I was going to love this palette so much more than I actually did. And the reason for it is two of the special shades. So this is what the palette looks like. I really like the sort of basic shades that you get in here. So I love this mauve tone matte. I quite like this rosy undertone brown. Um, I like this like mauve tone shimmer as well. And I really like these two topper shades, but these two, I just feel don't really go with the palette. So on my complexion, this rosy peachy shade and another gold, because that's what, love, what Pat McGrath loves to put in every single palette is a gold. Um, this just wasn't perfect. It was for the price point that you pay for these palettes. I feel it wasn't perfect enough for me to really, really love it more, which is why I decided to put it in the number 19 spot. 
Number 18 then is one that I think I already put in my cool tone video, but I was like, um, no, I need to mention it actually in here because I feel that in my brain, the reason why this palette works for me is because it is rosy toned. What am I talking about? It's the Lime Crime Venus XL2. And it, it's got these like cool toned green shades and then some warm toned browny copper leaning shades. But it also has a lot of like mauvey rose tones in here. And that's why I wanted to put it in this video. I think that if you like one of the palettes that's still coming up, that this palette can be a really, really good alternative for it instead of the big version that actually came out. Can you guess what I'm talking about? We'll get to it when we get to it. But uh, those are some of my favorite palettes that are going to be ranked into this video. I love this palette. I really do like it, but I had to put it somewhere. And because it has the coolness and the warmth, I don't think it necessarily counts as a rosy tone palette, but I still wanted to mention it in here in the number 18 spot. Number 17 then. Catrice. Yes, there are some affordable things in today's video as well. Mainly Catrice, because Catrice does a good rosy toned eyeshadow palette, I can tell you. Um, and this is their Next Gen Nudes palette from the Pro Slim Eyeshadow Palettes. Now, this is one of the best palettes they've ever done. It is... Is it perfect? I don't think so, which is why I kind of ranked it in this part of the ranking to let you know. If you're looking for a good palette at the drugstore, then please try this. It's lovely. It's sort of like that Huda Beauty new nude kind of dupe. And when I first tried it, I thought this shade actually right here in the corner was so buttery and smooth that it was actually a cream. Until I stuck a brush in, I didn't realize it was a powder. So formula-wise, this is one of the best formulas at the drugstore. It's got enough variety in the shades, I feel, where some of these Pro Slim palettes can be a bit samey-samey. It's lovely. It's got good quality. It's at the drugstore price point, so what's not to love? Next up in the number 16 spot, Melt Millennial Pinks. This is a palette that got a lot of hate. Again, did I already put this in my cool tone video? I don't remember. But I think that with how many pinks this has, it deserves to go into a rosy tone ranking, right? Um, so you get all the rosy tones you could possibly want. And I think it's just to do with the fact that I have this cool to neutral undertone and that I'm very fair skinned, that this is why this palette actually worked out for me. In the end, I felt that I had no issues with this formula. It looked really pretty on. These really dark gray shades really gave a grungy vibe to this palette that I really appreciated. And I like the pinks in here. They really didn't make me look very sickly or anything like that. Even though they do skew a little bit more peachy sometimes, I was able to make this work wonderfully. And like I said, I had no issues with the formula. Number 15 then, and um, this is the Peach C Quad Falling in Eyeshadow Palette in 03 Falling in Pink. So Peach C is a K-Beauty brand. I bought this off of Yes Style, and it sort of looks like those quads from ColourPop, which I thought was cute, um, but I bought this way before I ever tried those ColourPop ones, and I thought it was really, really pretty. It really surprised me because a lot of K-Beauty eyeshadow just does doesn't look that interesting or that exciting, but this was really, really lovely for a pink toned, rosy toned look. You get two mattes, two shimmers. Uh, this is more of like one of those sequin shades that's got a little bit of sparkle running through it, but this rosy toned, like, it's like a rose gold copper kind of shade. It's really interesting. It's really pretty, very sort of almost ethereal looking, and it's great for every day. So if you're looking for easy to use shadows, then this is a nice one. And I think palettes that kind of disappointed me and that kind of put me off this brand a little bit are these little palettes from Juvia's Place. So I think in 2020 they started doing these like six pan palettes and that seems to be all they're doing right now. And I've got a couple of them and the ones I have I appreciate and I might get more use out of, but they're not my absolute favorite like some of my other Juvia's Place palettes are. The Mauves is really pretty, which is why it gets to go into the number 14 spot. It has a really lovely array here. Um, it does have four mattes and only two shimmers, 
but one of the shimmers that you get, which is this one here, I hope I can show you a little bit, but do you see, it looks like a boring pink in some lights, and then it has this really vibrant green flip to it. So it's like a pink to green, it's really special. I really like this shade for the crease. You get some really good dark mattes to deepen things up with, and you can make this pool almost a little bit more like purpley, or you can go a little bit more rosy with this. So even though it's only six pans, I do feel it gives you some versatility and it just makes for a very pretty palette that gives you some options to play with. So if that's what you're looking for, then this can be a pretty one, but with a curated color story. Number 13 then is going to be my Pat McGrath Mothership Divine Rose 2 palette. I ended up preferring the Divine Rose 2 over the Divine Rose 1, even though you might think when looking at the color story that I'll show you in a minute that it's not going to be my preference. I just felt that for the price point you pay for these hefty Pet McGrath palettes, that this just has a little bit more unique things to offer than Divine Rose 1. I felt that the Divine Rose 1 is the kind of look I can get with a lot of other palettes that I've ranked a lot higher here today. And with this, because you get this really nice bright pink shade that I, I liked a lot better than the bright pink in the Risqué Rose Quad, you get this like peachy shade, you get something that's deeper but more like a plum leaning shade, which I really appreciated. I really like these two shimmers. Um, you do get a bronzy peachy shade and a very yellow tone gold, um, but in this palette really the only shade I'm not really gravitating towards is this yellow tone gold, and everything else works really well on me. This is the multi-chrome gold sex terrestrial, which is, I'm not sure if you can see, um, but it's it's like purple and then it, it has a green flip. Oh, there you can see it a little bit. Now a Pet McGrath palette that I think is secretly perhaps, no, the subliminal is probably my favorite one of hers. But in terms of rosy tones, and she does a lot of rosy tones, I think this may very well be one of my favorites. I think I have one more coming up that I like even better than this. But this is really, really stunning. This is her Rose Decadence palette. I'm not sure if you can still get it. It was a little bit more affordable than some of the bigger things, but I remember nobody really liking this. And then I tried it myself, and I thought this looked stunning on me, especially this peachy matte in the middle. I just love, and then you have those like four shades. I just, I just can't. The bronze shade I liked a lot more than I thought I was going to. It has another gold. You know how I feel about Pat McGrath doing golds in every single palette. So did I necessarily need this? No. Um, but I think I bought this when I didn't really own the Divine Rose one yet. I think I had only just purchased like one of the quads or something like that. This was like my second Pat McGrath palette. So I wanted to try some of her mattes. This was a little bit more affordable. Then I fell in love with the mattes and I wanted to try some of her bigger palettes. And then number 11, just outside of the top 10, I was like, shall I put it in the top 10 or not with this one very much? Because I really, really like it. It's just, I think I would go over some of the other palettes in my top 10 over this one. And what I'm talking about is the Essence, I like to move it, move it. The, this little line from Essence, which is brilliant, I can't wait for them to do more of these and that hopefully us Europeans also get the two we didn't get. But we got this one and it has a really, really good mauve tone shade for the crease, which I love. The only reason why I don't love this more is because it's got this gray. And I wish that, I think that if the gray hadn't been there, that it would have been better, you know what I mean? And now we're getting into the top 10, and you will see that my top 10 consists of quite bougie options, I'm not gonna lie. Kicking off the top 10 is that other much better Pat McGrath buy that I did, and it's this guy. It's her uh, Blitz Astral Quad in Ritualistic Rose, which I haven't unwrapped yet. So this has the same packaging as like the larger palettes, but then smaller. And this was one of my favorites when I tried it. It has four of those like really fun shimmery shades, which she doesn't do in her looks quads. Um, and I really like the combination of the shades in here. Again, a gold, but it is a very light yellow. So it kind of works really well with my complexion. 
These two shimmers are outstanding and I really like how you get this bronzy brown to tie everything together. So even though these are all shimmers, you can still use this as a curated one look in a color, like in the palette. Number nine then, the Dose of Colors Marvelous Mauves. This is an all matte palette and I do not love all matte palettes. But if you're giving me such a fantastic ray, array of mauve tones, I mean, I'm not gonna say no. This is lovely quality. Dose of Colors mattes are a bit powdery, but they're really nice. You can, I, I'm not sure if you can see from there, but I've got some good use in these two shades for sure. The pattern is wearing off there. I like how this is also a little bit more cool toned leaning, but you do have some warmth. So this is, this is the kind of palette that you do need to pull something in. Um, but I have quite a few like, uh, like glittery shadows or like single shadows like ColourPop Super Shocks that I like to pair this with for a very, very basic look. And it looks stunning every single time. My final drugstore option is the number eight spot, which is the Catrice Five in a Box Soft Rose Look. And the reason why I rank this higher than the other Catrice entry in today's listing is because this just gives you all the rosy tones you could possibly want and it's only five shades. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really stunning. I've raved about these palettes a lot. I love the cool tone ones that they did. I like the neutral one that they did. I like the warm tone one that they did in this line. These are some really, really stunning palettes. The quality is consistent throughout, save for the new one with the more gray tones and the blue. I like the ones with the taupiness a little bit more, but that one was discontinued and replaced. But in terms of rosy tones, it doesn't get any better than this. These are cheap and cheerful, very affordable. You get something nice and rosy, something to blend it out with. You get two shimmers, something to deepen it out with. And it is quite cool tone leading, which is what I prefer my rosy tones. So yeah, a well-deserved number eight spot. Number seven, the palette that I had to hunt down because for some reason, the Urban Decay Naked 3 Mini just wasn't popping up in Dutch stores. It just wasn't. I'm not sure what happened to Urban Decay over here, but their stock was really, really low. I saw this in France thinking, oh, then we'll get it soon too. I've only seen a tester in store in like November, like right before we went into lockdown. That's when I was in a store and I finally spotted a tester, but I couldn't even see whether the palette was for sale. I had to order this online to get my hands on it so I could try it in time for, before I could like film this video. Um, and we, we all know about my love affair with Naked 3. There's a reason why I haven't seen that video, that palette yet in this video because, duh, of course it's going to be in the top five. Um, this is like the cooler tone sister of the Naked 3. The Naked 3 has quite a few rose golds in it, and this is Naked 3 Void of the Rose Gold. It just has mauve tones. And I'm like, yes, that's what I want. So it's very light, not gonna lie. These two mattes, however, are perfect for me. You get some good shimmers in here. You get a nice inner corner highlight shade, but that isn't too intense, like it's more of like a satin. Urban Decay's formula, I know a lot of people are saying that it's a little outdated, that they should do something about it, but here's the reason why I love Urban Decay Naked palettes till this day. It's workable, it's easy to use. If you're a professional working in an industry where wearing a lot of very bold makeup just isn't really done, then I think Urban Decay Naked palettes are just really, really good go-tos for your daily basic looks. And number six is, I think if Urban Decay's Naked Formula is not your favorite and you're looking for a little bit more expensive brand that has really good quality, then definitely look into Viseart. They're not, I think they, they do one called the Paris Edit. I don't have that. Um, but that still kind of appeals to me, but I didn't buy it because I already have so many other rosy tones. I mean, I, I can't try everything, you guys. But I did try their Petite Pro Midsummer. Um, and this, it's sort of fusing together a couple of the things that I liked about some of the palettes in previous part of the ranking. So you get this really interesting, very, no, this one over here. <laughs> you get this really interesting, more ethereal kind of shimmer. You get some warm tones, you get some true rosiness, 
but some things are also a bit more neutral and cool toned. So you get a really nice blend of colors. It is very light and wearable. It's got a really outstanding formula. It's got very small pans, so especially if you're someone who travels for work and you just want to bring something small and curated that gives you options, then these little petite pro palettes are great ones to begin with. You can like pick and choose from them and pick the one you like. But if you want to go for a rosy mauve toned one, the Midsummer is really nice. Not sure it's still available, but I did really like it. Are you ready for the top five of this ranking? Number five is going to be Natasha Denona's Mini Retro. Yes, this was the palette I was referencing when I was talking about the Lime Crime Venus XL2. Um, if you want the bigger version of this with the green tones, go for the Lime Crime. It exists, it's on the market. I'm gonna be doing a video, I hope in February, where I'm gonna be talking about these like palette alternatives, uh, so that if you don't own palette A or it's too expensive or you want more, what palette you can then go for. And I definitely will be featuring that pairing and sort of like put them side by side. Um, this, I love. I held off of buying this because I was hoping that if they were doing a bigger version of this, it would be like this. Now, we know by now that the bigger version is nothing like this, but I still really like this palette, or I still really like that palette, I should say. And I think that this is just a really good, like, not the same palette, it's not the palette we all wanted it to be, um, but I think that this in its own regard is a very stunning one, which is why it gets to go into the number five spot. These grayish greens, like sagey greens, I love them. They're very close to like the wall in my bedroom, which I painted five years ago and I'm still not tired of that color. Um, it's very similar to that, so I really like it. It has that very ethereal shade that I also liked very much in the Viseart that that has. Only this is more of like a greenish flip, where the, whereas the one in the Viseart is more of a blue one. Um, and then you just have these really nice shades to keep it very neutral if you'd like. Like if you just want to go for the bare, bare basics, this in the crease, this all over the lid, great. So it's five pans, but you have options. Number four. And I didn't think I was going to rank this this high, but sp specifically because I knew I wanted to do this video, I got myself this. This is the Melt She's in Parties palette. I already owned the stack, which I wasn't getting a lot of use out of because it was dark. It was a dark palette that just made it look like I had a smoky eye or I was punched in the face. Like it was a very fine line. And I was sort of humming and hawing, like, shall I buy the palette if I already own a stack? I'm not really sure. But I was like, you know, I do want to show some different options when I do this ranking. And I thought this could be a nice one. I thought maybe if I have it as a palette and not as, not as this cumbersome stack, I might reach for it more. Wow. I am super impressed with the quality of this. I'm going to be putting it in a 10 palette review video once I've tried 10 more palettes. Hopefully in February or March, I should be able to do another one for you. Um, I mean, what they've added to this palette really adds the dimension that I was missing in this stack. So especially with these two. Yeah, these two shades here are just the light shades that I needed to liven this up a little bit. And then I think... If I'm not mistaken, these two shimmers are also new in this palette. And especially this darker one was really, really stunning. And we, we cannot talk about rosy tone palettes without mentioning this guy. And I've decided to put it in the number three spot because in the past year, two new palettes have been released that I feel have ousted this from, like, well, is it not necessarily favorites territory? Like, I will hold this near and dear to my heart for the rest of my life. I know I just will. I mean, I think that before I started skewing more towards the Naked 2, the Naked 3 was definitely my favorite Irma Decay palette. Um, I've got some dents in here, but not as many as my Naked 2. Um, so I do have a dent and trick and I really like mugshot in here and I really like how the Naked Mini seems to just go more into the vibe of what you get in this side of the palette, which is my favorite part and not these very light pinky tones, which is not my vibe necessarily. But yeah, for me, um, I really like dust in here 
and I kind of ignore these three shades and then I use the rest of the palette. And here, I'm still a little undecided. I think that if I were to do this ranking again in like a year, maybe I might have switched these round. But for now, based on like kind of first impressions because I need to spend more time with both of these to really make up my mind. But number two, I'm going to be putting the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz that came out in November. I thought this was going to be the number one when I sort of had swatched it and knowing how much I love the Huda Beauty, uh, Huda, Huda Beauty formula um, because I have some of our larger palettes which are also some of my favorites in their respective categories. This, I really, really like the looks I did. I just, I need to play with this more to really, really be able to label it as a top, top, top favorite. I did looks using every single shade in this palette in the week leading up to filming this video. Um, and I just felt that some of the shimmers that are in duochromes just weren't as vibrant and easy to pick up as I wanted them to be. So um, this purple shade, this pink shade, this taupey shade, um, and also this like road, like mauve tone shade, like those four, I, I had expected more of. They really need a finger and foiling for them to really look vibrant on the eye. And I'm not used to having to do that with a Huda Beauty palette. Is this stunning? Were the looks I created great? Is this like my updated version of the Naked 3? Because not only does it have taupiness and rosiness and all the things I love, it also has texture. Um, I wasn't a big fan, of course, of the Petri dish shade. We all know that. But thank you, Lorraine, for pointing out that it makes for a very nice base for some of these like duochrome kind of shimmers that you get in this side of the palette. So that worked really, really well. And now you might be wondering, so what's still left? It's the Natasha Denona Retro. This is the one I decided to put into the number one spot because this actually surprised me in a good way once I tried it. When I first swatched this, I didn't like those cream to powder formula thing that she has in here. And there are like three or four of those in the palette. And I was like, I'm not gonna like this. I'm not gonna like this. And then I used those on my eyes and I was like, oh. So where with the Huda Beauty, I felt it swatched really well. And I was deeply, deeply impressed with the way the palette swatched. And based on that, I was like, this is going to be my new favorite rosy tone palette. I just know it. I felt that when using it, those shimmers were a bit lacking. And he, in here, I thought based on swatches, I was going to struggle with some of the mattes. And they ended up working really well with me. You do have to know that this corner is a little bit more warm tone leaning. Everything else is a bit more cool toned. Um, but I, like this shade here, I mean, oh, it's so stunning. I really like how you get a couple of options in here as well for an inner corner highlight. It has the versatility I want. And even when I did use these warm tones on me, where it usually looks like I've got pink eye if I use warm toned rosy tones on myself with this, it just didn't. It just didn't. I loved it. And that's why this for now gets to go into the number one spot. But yeah, I think that these rosy toned releases that came out in the last six months, they definitely upped the game when it comes to rosy toned eyeshadow palettes for sure. And I'm sort of going back and forth between the two. So yeah, that's the ranking for today. Thank you very much for watching today's video, you guys. It was a struggle bus to film this. Like it took me an hour and a half to film this. Like why? Oh well, that's life. For now, thank you very much for watching today's video, everybody. If you could thumbs it up, that would be very much appreciated for sure. Subscribe if you are interested in seeing more of my videos. I'm doing two videos a week at the moment, but come February, I hope to up the ante and go for three videos a week. I hope. That's the plan. I'm not sure if I can make it work. There's no promise here, um, but I do usually film three videos a week. So I hope to see you in my next one. Thank you very much. Take care, everybody, and see you then. Bye-bye.